Hey everybody, welcome back to another Circuit Basics tutorial. My name is Scott, and today I'd like to show you how to set up an LCD touchscreen on a Raspberry Pi. Now a lot of touchscreens uh, come with a CD that has the operating system image already on it, and you can easily just burn that to your SD card and be up and running pretty quickly, but that OS usually comes with uh, a lot of other pre-installed software that you might not want. And also if you want to use a different operating system like uh, XBMC or um, Pydora, anything else, uh, you're kind of out of luck. So what I'm going to do in this tutorial is show you how to uh, install the drivers and configure all the files that you need to get your LCD touchscreen up and running on a clean version of pretty much any OS uh, you want. So follow along and we'll get this going. First thing you want to do is follow the link in the description to uh, my blog post on how to set up an LCD touchscreen on the Raspberry Pi. Here you're going to find all the code and you'll find a link uh, to check to see if your screen is supported by the drivers we're going to be using. We're going to be using the FBTFT drivers um, made by this guy, Notro. And so you want to click the link and then scroll down. And you'll see a list of supported displays in alphabetical order. And you'll see a dot name equals, and this one is for Adafruit, uh, 1.8 inch. There are a lot of screens supported, so just scroll down and see if you can find yours. And here's the WaveShare, WaveShare 3.2 inch. This is the one that I'm going to be using. So make note of that name, because we're going to need it later. Now you want to log into your Pi through PuTTY. You need to access the command prompt. So now what you need to do is enable the display output to output over SPI. By default, the Raspberry Pi display is uh, output through HDMI. So what we need to do is go to the blog post at circuitbasics.com, scroll down to the first step, touch screen setup and configuration, and copy the file name, paste it in there, go down to the line that says option fb dev forward slash dev forward slash fb0. fb0 option is for HDMI. We need to change this to FB1, which outputs the display to SPI. Save. So the next thing we need to do is enable SPI. The Raspberry Pi comes with SPI disabled by default. And if you have Raspbian uh, prior to January 31st, 2015, we're going to need to edit the blacklist file. If you have a Raspberry Pi Model 2, the one gigabyte version, um, or Raspbian after January 31st, 2015, we're going to need to do that in the Raspi config configuration menu. And I'll show you both ways right now. So if you have the earlier version of Raspbian, go to my blog post and scroll down to step two and find sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash modprobe d forward slash raspi dash blacklist comp and enter that in the command line. Now we need to comment out the line that says blacklist spi dash bcm 2708 and to do that we just put a hashtag in front of that. That's it. So control X to save, and yes, and enter. 
So that's the earlier versions of Raspbian. If you have the later version of Raspbian, just enter sudo raspyconfig. Go down to advanced options, press enter, and go down to SPI, enable slash disable automatic loading, and press enter. And select yes, and enter. And yes, we want it to load by default. Now we can exit this. and reboot. And once it starts back up, go back into the blog post. Now we're ready to download and install the drivers for the LCD touchscreen. So go to the blog post down to step three and find the command to download the FBTFT drivers. Enter that. This is going to take a while. I actually sped it up just to save time in the video. Alright, and we're going to need to reboot it again. So sudo reboot. And once the Raspberry Pi restarts, we'll log back in. And we need to change some of the configuration settings. So once you're logged in, enter sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash modules and this file tells the CPU which modules to load at boot time. So go back to the blog post scroll down and get all of this code if you're using the later version of Raspbian, or the Raspberry Pi Model 2, you want to change the first line that says SND BCM2835. That needs to say SND BCM2836. That's the module for your central processor. Edit the file, make sure every all these are on one line. You see where it says name equals wave share? 32B. This is just for my WaveShare 3.2 inch LCD. You want to take the name from the supported devices list that we found earlier and change that to the name of your own device. And there's two different places in this file that says that. So you need to change it right after FBTFT underscore device name equals WaveShare 32B. Change that. And also change on the second line down uh, WaveShare 32B. And make sure to get everything on this line, it's really long. And Control X to exit, save. Now we need to edit the forward slash boot forward slash cmd line dot text file. So enter sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash cmd line dot txt. And you can just delete this line. And go back to the blog post. And scroll down to step five and copy this code. And 
and paste it in. Now everything in this file has to be on one line. So make it like that. And then scroll over. There's another instance where you need to enter your own device name. So fbtft underscore device dot name equals waveshare 32b in my case. You want to change that to the device name of your own LCD screen. Once you've done that, control X, save and exit. Now, in order to make sure that we boot up to the graphical user interface, um, we need to add a line to the RC local file. So enter sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash rc dot local. Now, if you prefer to just boot up to the command line, you can skip this step. So once you're in there, scroll down to the bottom. Right above exit zero and enter su space dash l space pi space dash c space start x and save and exit all right now we can reboot now if you look at the screen when it starts up it'll show some boot text And eventually it'll boot up to the Raspbian desktop. Now as you can see, uh, this is in portrait mode. I'm going to do another video right after this that will show you how to change the screen rotation to uh, landscape mode. And we're also going to need to uh, change the orientation of the touchscreen driver. So stay tuned for that. And if you have any questions, leave a comment. Alright, I'll talk to you later.